Almost 40% of Canadians live in Ontario. The country's largest city and much of the nation's capital are both located here. This province was a critical founding partner of the country in 1867. We have much to be proud of here, but how many of us living in this province think of ourselves as Ontarians? And what does it mean to be, specifically, an Ontarian? To help us explore that elusive idea of an Ontario identity, we're joined by Mark Mayer. He's director and CEO of the National Gallery of Canada. Charlie Foran, CEO of the Institute of Canadian Citizenship. Menon Dwarka, artistic and managing director of the 918 Bathurst Arts Centre in Toronto. And Gail Lord, president of Lord Cultural Resources. Good to have all of you wonderful Ontarians here, whatever that means, and we're going to find that out over the next period of time. I want to start by hearkening back to something that, uh, if you were here 50 years ago, you remember well and lovingly. Roll it. It was a place to stand, and a place to go, and call this land Ontario, a place to live for you and me, with hopes as high as tall as free. Well, that unforgettable tune was written, of course, for our centennial year, uh, meant to praise and promote the province of Ontario. And I wonder, uh, go ahead, Charlie, get us started here. Any memories attached to that in particular? Uh, of course, I sang it. We messed up the words, messed with the words. We felt something. I think it was the first time I ever identified where I was living as a seven-year-old in the suburbs of Toronto. The song captures, reflects the era, the sweetness of the nationalist movement that congealed around 1967 and Expo and pushed out and was the birth of or a, a nationalist movement, a cultural nationalist movement that one could argue had about a 20 year lifespan and then passed away. <laughs> Gail, how about you? Yeah, I, re I remember the song well. I thought it was a lot better than Canada, so I thought it spoke mm -hmm. to Ontario's uh, talent. Uh, we can sing, we can dance. And um, I think that we probably need uh, more of that. More of that. That would be my, my contention, yes. Were you uh, growing up in Sudbury, Ontario at this time? I was growing up in Sudbury, uh, but in 1967, I lived in Los Angeles for a year. Huh. My, my father moved us all. He wanted to become a movie star, so he packed up the kids and moved to... So we missed the centennial year, but we came back in 68, so I didn't miss all that much. Did you pick up on the tune when you came yes, home? Yes, yes. We all sang the tune. You all sang the tune. How about you, Menon? I wasn't actually born yet, <laughs> but but certainly certainly I remember the tune we sang it at school. But to me, it's wrapped up in memories of Ontario Place and this kind of utopian Ontario future that that everything seemed to be new and upward moving, and it seemed like a great encapsulation of what was good about the the province. If that song evoked utopia yes. for you, yes, did you at some point in your life feel like an Ontarian? I think I felt more like an Ontarian when I left Ontario. When I went to, I spent about 20 years in New York doing cultural programming, and I realized that there were these very strong ingrained uh, views about public health and public education and things like that, things which, which my fellow New Yorkers a lot of times didn't really think about. But were those Canadian things you were thinking about or well, Ontario Ontario OHIP was very firmly planted in my okay. mind, and I, I used to run large faculties of, of um, teachers, none of whom had health insurance. Uh, and this always weighed on me. We did extension programs in the schools. The schools were nothing like the schools we had in Ontario. But the O in OHIP really rang true uh, to you. Definitely, yeah. Okay. Gail, yeah, how about you? Yeah, I think that uh, identity is Ontario. It, it's, it's an elusive identity, as you said at the beginning. Mm -hmm. But I think it's an important identity. It's important because Ontario stands for things public health, we stand for civil society, which is really, really important. We have probably the greatest supply of fresh water and some salt water in the entire world, so we have big responsibilities, and we actually have Canada's largest uh, indigenous population, you know, hmm. is, is here in Ontario, so, and the most diverse, probably the most diverse place in the world. So I think that the, uh, these responsibilities weigh heavy on our shoulders. As a guy who's running one of the most important cultural institutions in the country, a national cultural institution, do you ever have days where you think of yourself as an Ontarian? Uh, actually, very, very rarely. I think of myself as a Canadian every single day. That's, uh, that's really part of the brief when you're the director of the National Gallery. Ontario is kind of in our blind spot in a way uh, because we're so conscious of our Canadianness in that institution. Even though you're in Ontario. 
We very much are in Ontario, <laughs> yes. Ottawa is still Ontario, isn't it? It very much sort is. Of, sort no, of. you're in the national capital region, technically yes. speaking, as a matter of fact. But and unlike the United States, uh, there isn't a difference between the national capital region uh, and, and Ontario. Yeah, you still vote still, in Ontario election. Yes, that's huh. right. Which well, you don't. Shall we do an update on this song? Because they did do it. If you go to the movies or if you watch TV, you will see this. They've done an update of Ontario area, area although they took that part out of it. Oh, that's Here's true. what it looks like today. Roll it. Give us a place to stand. Give us a place to Okay, Charlie, it's obviously slicker, it's got more uh, sis boom ba and all yep. bells and whistles and all that business, but do you, what other differences would you notice between that one and the original? It, better production quality. A <laughs> <laughs> um, little more about in inclusion, about diversity, a little more openly uh, acknowledging Toronto, I think, uh, based on the images it looks like, um, where, as I suspect the original was a little careful about that. I just wanted to add, though, to the idea of being an Ontarian that I... I grew up with no sense of myself as an Ontarian, except when people would tell me I was an Ontarian because I represented Central Canada and the Family Compact and the Laurentian Compact and consensus. There was not, consensus yeah. Excuse me. Yes, it was nothing like traveling Canada to to, for, for, to hear and to get a feeling how other people view someone from Ontario. I viewed myself as a I'm half Franco-Ontarian, half Irish-Canadian, and I honestly spent very little time like Mark thinking about being someone from Ontario, but other people were quite wanting me to own that. And happy to remind you of it when you were outside the province. Yes, the, the, the sort of, uh, the, 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 the privilege of it, the, <laughs> the, the natural centre of power, the self-declared natural centre of power. What's interesting is that while the old song was a chorus, this new song is a solo voice with a harmony vocal added. It's a singular voice. What do you infer from that? that there's a kind of redirection of a kind of personal identity outwards. The other one was a, was a kind of, let's all sing together because we've never sang together before. This is a solo voice uh, projected with images of, of pretty unambiguous uh, identities of certain kinds of minorities. There's, you can kind of do a checkbox list on it, but uh, it's about, it's addressing individuality, but not really that all these individuals are singing together. Okay, let's really get oh, that's a great point. Let's get heavy that's and metaphorical great. here. Do you think because we're in a post Charter yeah. of Rights and Freedoms era that the individual now counts yeah. for more and therefore a singular I, voice? I think that, that that's kind of we're in an era of fractured identities, and so mm -hmm. we have one person singing. On the other hand, this the visual symbolism really is a fluidity. Mm -hmm. So what I think we're in is is a kind of a postmodern era of identities, not, not so much post-national, but post-modern, in the sense that identity is very fluid. And um, uh, your identity today, my identity today, might be a different identity tomorrow. And I, I kind of feel that we, we get a little sense of that in, in this young woman singing. Hmm. Yeah. Some of you around this table may know Nelson Wiseman, who's taught at the University of Toronto for a long time, and here is what he's had to say about some of this. Ontario is not known for regional grievances, for feeling ignored, taken for granted, shunted aside, or shortchanged. Such sentiments and conditions are identified with Quebecers and Western and Atlantic Canadians. Ontarians have touted grandness rather than victimization. Ontarians are more likely than Canadians elsewhere to articulate a pan-Canadian position, less likely to think of their own province as a region or to think of Canada as a composite of quite different regions whose residents have regionally diverse outlooks. Ontario's demographic weight, wealth, and power buttress its preeminence. So naturally, the Ontarian is often depicted as the quintessential English Canadian. Now that's from 10 years ago. You're a Franco-Ontarian. Yeah. Does that work for you? Well, Franco-Ontarians are kind of, we've, we've got split personalities. We've got the English side of us, because uh, most of us speak English. Uh, that feels the same way all the other people from Ontario uh, feel, and that is it's a very generic place and we're from here and we don't really have an identity. And yet the, and then the French side, of course, we have a very strong identity and we identify ourselves as not Quebecers in the same way that Canadians identify themselves as not Americans. Uh, it's kind of a negative uh, identity in a way. So, and you're torn between the two, but that's very, very real. And, and being a Franco-Ontarian is something that I'm extremely conscious of when people ask me what my ethnicity is, that's my answer. Hmm. 
If you look at the jumbotron behind us, you can see it. I mean, that Union Jack is pretty prominent on our flag still. Does that speak to you as an English Canadian? <laughs> it speaks to the past, I feel. Mm -hmm. Because I, I think what, just addressing this idea of multiple identities and what Gail was saying earlier about uh, post-colonial uh, kind of identities, I think that we live in a, uh, modern Ontario uh, is a transcultural space. In what does which, that mean? That means that depending on my context, that he could be more Franco and more Ontarian and more English in certain contexts. I could be more Guyanese or more New York or more Scarborough. Hmm. But the truth is, is that the, the thing that's interesting about Ontario is that I can do these things without anybody challenging me or getting upset or being threatened, <laughs> which is not the case in New York City. You can be anything you want in New York as long as you're a New Yorker. Yeah, right. As soon as you start to give that up, there's a lot of suspicion. Interesting. Yeah. How about the how, how about this notion of what Nelson Wiseman talks about that that's yeah. us and we're different from everybody else because of it? Well, we are different from everybody else, but I think there's lo lots of reasons. One of the reasons is that everybody else you know, lives close to the American border, but we live close to huge American cities, and that is a very fundamental difference. We grew up. There was Buffalo. It was thriving. There was Detroit. It was thriving, and that's quite different from having a border with some farmland or some forest. On, on the other side. Mm. So I think that the need to carve our own Canadian, Ontarian identity is quite specific to Ontario. And I, I kind of like to focus on, on how that makes a difference. Mm. Makes a big difference. Mm. Take a look at the map. Nobody else is living beside huge American cities, uh, belching out their values, sending out their uh, their signals and so on. I think oh, that's well, a big Vancouver's not far from Seattle. Um, true, <coughs> but it is separated by water. It's separated by by a lot more mm -hmm. than we are. You can't just literally walk over, right. which, which we can. Do you feel like a quintessential English Canadian after hearing Nelson Wiseman's praise there? I think I was raised that Canadian, that flag, which is indeed from the past. I think, however, and this is maybe extending Gail's thought. What actually distinguishes Ontario now, specifically the greater Toronto area, is that is this extraordinary, unprecedented experiment yeah, exactly. in diversity, experiment in inclusion. We are doing something right here, right now, that no one else in the world was doing at this level, and, and so far with this success. Pretty well, yeah. So I would much rather, I, I certainly am tired of having to defend the Laurentian Compact, whatever <laughs> it was or might be, <laughs> and certainly tired of having to defend the notion that if you're from Ontario, you have assumptions of superiority or privilege. But I'm very happy to own that one. I'm very happy to own the Ontario and the GTA we are now. Let's just share some polling with you all here, because they're, they're, we, we know in Ontario we tend not to think of ourselves as Ontarians first, Canadians second. That's not the case in some other provinces. Why don't we bring this up here? Uh, if you're from Manitoba, do you have a strong sense of belonging to the province of Manitoba? Well, not so much. 37% do, but two-thirds of Manitobans have a very strong sense of belonging to Canada. How about Ontario? Again, 39% with a strong sense of belonging to the province, but 70% with a strong sense of belonging to Canada. And then it descends. Albertans have a stronger sense of belonging to their province than the country. Quebecers, of course, a much stronger sense of belonging to their province as opposed to the country. And Newfoundland and Labrador, the strongest sense of belonging to their particular province as opposed to a strong, a less, um, or equally strong sense, I guess, of belonging to the country. Uh, any surprises in there for you, Charlie? No, the, the, the overarching surprise for me, and I think Canadians undersell this, underthink about it, if that's a terrible word. Canada is an astonishment. We are 4,000 miles wide. We extend to the Arctic Circle. It is amazing to me that all these people who have even in, in the 21st century, even with all the uh, transportation and technology, still are vast distances between these different groups, and yet this glue is there, and this, this complex, but ultimately quite positive, overall feeling about national identity exists at all. I don't think we spend enough time thinking about how remarkable it is. Probably everybody at this table travels a fair bit, and as you know, it's easier to, quicker to fly to London, England than to Vancouver, British Columbia. Amazing. Yeah. That, that, that says a great deal, doesn't it, right yeah, there? Yeah. But do you wish that we were a little bit more like Newfoundland and Labrador or Quebec or Alberta and had a stronger sense of our Ontarianness relative to the country? 
It, it's a tough question, actually. I think that we everybody should have a sense of where they live and why they live there. Otherwise, you're a kind of rootless person. Mm -hmm. And so I think that the identity component is, a, is actually very important. And we have a wonderful identity. We have our problems, but we kind of have an attitude to let's solve them. And I'm concerned that we aren't focused on the positive in Ontario, that we tend to either see ourselves as a kind of see-through see -through place that's invisible, and so uh, why not hire uh, most of our cultural leaders from elsewhere? That's one of the, one of the problems. We have an actual... What's that, what's that a reference to? It, it's a reference to the fact that in the city of Toronto right now, most of the cultural leaders have been literally brought in from other countries. It's and really quite incredible. Do you regret well, that? I think that it has a, uh, I, think, I think that our culture is the main carrier of our identity, and I think we have a complex and really subtle identity. And yeah, of course I regret it, because I think it's pretty hard for those organizations to be led in a consciously Ontarian or Canadian way. Not to get too far off the path here, but do you think they're ticked off in Boston about the fact that there's an Ontarian running their museum down I there? think that they're thrilled, and they should be thrilled, but one out of 20 cultural leaders is not the same as the majority of cultural leaders. And mm. that, I think, is maybe it's something that we, our diversity, it's our diversity here in the province. We have lots of fabulous people here. I have mm. to get that out because it's an issue. <laughs> okay. Let's... Um, Let's put this up here now to celebrate Ontario's 150. Of course, we're hearing a lot about Canada's 150th, but it's, of course, also the 150th anniversary of Ontario. And so the Lieutenant Governor of the province, Elizabeth Dowdswell, invited 150 Ontarians to share short appreciations of what the province means to them. And here's one from Bill Thorsell, the former publisher of the Globe and Mail, former head of the Royal Ontario Museum, who's originally from Alberta and wrote this on visiting Toronto. I was sitting on a bench in Yorkville, where someone had left a newspaper on a ledge. The wind scattered it around. To my amazement, a man got up, chased down the many pages, and placed them in a trash can. I did not witness that kind of thing in Edmonton then. Does that tell us anything about being an Ontarian that you didn't know beforehand? I live in that neighborhood, and I've never seen that happen, <laughs> but that's it. okay. Yeah, that's <laughs> great. Kind of description of cleanliness and the broad forests or whatever makes me crazy about, because it, yeah. it's just such a pat thing. I mean, sure, people are clean and tidy here, but that doesn't tell us about the hearts and minds of the people that are living here. Well, but that's the question. Does it, does it speak to a, a need for cleanliness, orderliness, peace, order, and good government, lest I use that expression, that I, we have here in this province? Yeah, I think that that's a basic human need. Uh, on the Maslow period, uh, pyramid or whatever, we're talking about safety and cleanliness and things like that. But, you know, we have attributes like our ability to sway in the direction of these American cities, imbibe their culture, bring it back with us, and still be ourselves. I think that's a really, it might be seen as a, as a, a detriment previously, but we've unleashed a whole group of workers in the States who can blend in with all these various companies and run things. Uh, I always notice there's never any really strong Canadian clubs in these major centers, unlike English clubs, or what, we don't band together because we're so good at, at extending ourselves outwards. Hmm. Yeah. Um, I don't know about that, actually, because I lived in New York for many years, and uh, we would always have a huge party where all the Canadians would get together to celebrate Canadian Thanksgiving with a few American friends who thought it was so amusing that you could have Thanksgiving a month early. But we, we did stick together, the Canadians, and the Canadians sort of stick together in Paris also, which was another foreign city I lived in where Canadians tend to stick together. Uh, none of us had language problems. It wasn't for that reason, certainly not in New York. How about within but, those groups of Canadians sticking together, would, would Ontarians seek each other out and, and feel there was a common bond there? That's a good question, and it's something that I think we need a, a much more impressive philosopher than any of us to unpack, because I can't tell the difference. Uh, am I talking about myself as an Ontarian or as a Canadian? In my head, I'm usually talking about myself as a Canadian. But that's interesting that you make no distinction between the two. Clearly, in Quebec, in Alberta, in Newfoundland and Labrador, they do make they that do. distinction. I Absolutely. think because they need to, and we don't in Ontario. Perhaps that's why. Yeah. It's not something that's important to me. It's not missing from my life that I don't have a kind of a, a appartenance, as we say in French, a belongingness mm. to Ontario. I belong to Ontario. It's something I take completely for granted and never really think about. Well, the coat of arms doesn't take it for granted because if you actually look at the coat of arms that Queen Victoria gave us in 1868, the motto in Latin reads, ut in caput fidelis sic permanet. 
Loyal, she began. Loyal, she remains. Oh, wow. Charlie, does that have any resonance at all to anybody who's <laughs> under 50 today, let's say? No, no, nor should it. Nor should it? I don't think so, not particularly. I, I would suggest that we need some new language to understand who we are and how we are comporting ourselves as society. I think even the language of politeness, the little newspaper incident, is actually the old language and it's banal language and it's colonial language. I think the correct language is accommodation. The correct language is a sophisticated understanding of space here. That, is, that actually speaks to who we are. I think so much of our language, like some, some of our symbols, are from a, frankly, a colonized Ontario. And we're way past that. So we should change the flag? Yes. I think so too. Time to get rid of the flag. Yes. Yeah, John I wrote totally Bart's agree. pick that flag. You want to get rid of that flag? Yeah. Yes. I agree. It's time mm -hmm. for a new the right Honestly, answer. Honestly, it's really. When I walked into the room, I was shocked. Of course, very big. I, I, I thought, oh my God, that, that is what they think Ontario is. That's our flag. I understand, but I think it is time to change it. It would there's be a, a great year to do it. There's a Franco Ontarian flag that's quite beautiful. Yes. Oh, uh, let's see yes. it. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't have one. No, it's got, yeah. Trillium and the Fleur de Lis. Exactly. Trillium and the Fleur de Lis. Trillium and the Fleur de Lis. And a green background for the Fleur de Lis. The Fleur de Lis in French. And a white background for the Trillium. And see, this is not disrespecting the past. This is not disrespecting the 19th and, let's say, first half of the 20th centuries. They they happen. This is a, a largely an accurate reflection. That Latin motto is largely accurate as the self-conceptions of Ontarians during that first century, let's say. Mm -hmm. I just think we're now well into the second century and we are an evolving, expanding space and we can do better. And we should find the language that explains who we are. It's, it's not that elusive, but you can't, you can't get there if you keep talking about that we're polite. We didn't have a flag before this one, actually. This flag's only 50 years well, old. Well, that's another issue. We didn't have any... F we, were, we, were, we used the Union Jack. Yeah. But yeah. that's perhaps another debate. I'm not it's sure. The, it's the Union... It's the Red Ensign. It's the Red it's Ensign. A, which, it's a yeah. sub-British flag. So. Right. Exactly right. Yeah. right. I, think, I think what's interesting, though, we talked about travel, the fact that each of us is as somewhat of an international person. I've lived in Ontario all my life, but I've, I've worked in, like, I don't know, 100... 100 100 different cities and many different countries. And I think what's amazing about Ontarians is how we fly below the radar. Mm -hmm. And so when we, and it's really one of the qualities that makes us successful internationally. We're easily, because we're surrounded by people from everywhere, we can easily land anywhere and be really quite comfortable. I think it makes Ontario very successful in international trade. We probably could be more uh, successful. I think we need to be more, have more funding from our government to export Ontario talent and make our identity uh, stronger on the world mm -hmm. stage. I think we need to talk about how can we strengthen this, this great thing that we have. We do it with so little support compared to other, other regions, other places. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that, that that's something we have to kind of throw out there. Going back to the flag for a second, Mark, that, oh, yeah, that flag flag. did. You will indulge flag. me. He's defending yeah. the flag. I, feel no, like. listen, I, think it's, I think it's a good debate. It's a good debate. Uh, that flag evokes uh, the family compact, which ran this province for a very long time, and um, which suggested once upon a time that unless you sort of came from British stock, uh, the, the yeah, privileges right. that Absolutely flowed from right. that family compact were not for you. And in fact, there was a little revolt about six blocks north of here, uh, where the reformers tried to take on the family compact and lost. Uh, is that still on? Is that still the Ontario of today? I have to tell you, Stephen. I'm very embarrassed to say this, but I never really noticed that that was the flag of Ontario. To be quite frank, uh, I, I've noticed a lot of other flags, but not not really that one. So it, yeah, it's invisible, uh, and that, the flag may be one of the problems. But I'd like to come back to something that Gail said about how how we fly under the radar and how comfortable Canadians are in the world. I grew up in Sudbury, as you know, which is every bit as cosmopolitan as Toronto. And I think that the fact that your next door neighbors as a child were people who spoke a different language than any language you'd ever heard of, or any of the languages of the other, makes you a different kind of person in the world. My father used to say, the difference between an American and a Canadian is, an American is visiting a foreign country when he's abroad, whereas 
Yeah, the Canadian is the foreigner when he's abroad. I have a sense that I'm not from here and I'm visiting this place. Mm-hmm. And that's a huge difference between us and them. And I think it has to do with this fundamental cosmopolitanism of, of Canadians. That, that we've evolved. I'm glad you mentioned Sudbury because I think that one of the other special things about Ontario is that we have quite a few big cities and mid-sized cities and we have a lot of small towns and small cities. And we are in the midst of a kind of crisis of the survival of these small cities, Mm. yet small towns and cities, they have a kind of life cycle. You know, the the children grow up, they leave for more ambitious places, then people retire, they return. And I think, again, that Ontario has to take this life cycle of cities. It it is a crucial part of our identity. I think every one of us has some small town or Mm. some wonderful place that we go. Mm. Um, and, And they aren't apart from us, they are a part of us. So how do we make that happen? Which I think is different. I think it's different from other other places. Charlie, do you still see manifestations of uh, old yeah. Ontario making its presence felt in today's Ontario? It is resilient. It has resources. It's necessarily not like it was. When I was a child, my father would drive me around to the and point out the orange lodges in the yeah. GTA because we were right. Catholic. That's right. And That's he would say, "These people still run this place," and. I am mindful even now Mm. in 2017 that there's a lot of power that resides inside those older structures, socioeconomic, class, and so forth. At the same time, it is all up for grabs. So much of the energy in in Ontario, so much of the energy in the GTA is in the 905. It's new people, new thinking, old new. They're bringing thinking from their countries. Mm. It's all up for grabs. This is a protean unfolding place. So, yes, and I don't begrudge Anglo-Saxons and family compact people their, their, their lifestyles <laughs> or their opportunities, but they are just one player now. Have you been to an Orange Day parade lately? Not in a long time. It's, but there's I was, nothing left. There's, I mean, nothing there's almost left. nothing to right. it now. That's Good right. to hear, Steve. <laughs> uh, they, they used to march by our house, um, and I was a little, little kid, and my mother would always have me turn away, and she would say, you know, th- those people are against people like us. And who are people like you? Uh, people like us were not white Anglo-Saxon uh, Protestants. And, uh, and yeah, and I didn't really understand it, but I, I mm. came to understand it, yeah. Do you see manifestations of old Ontario still trying to hang on? No, not really. I mean, mm. for me, uh, Ontario is the only large cosmopolitan center in North America that owns the racial slur for uh, South Asians. It's, you don't, in New York, you don't hear this. In Texas, you don't hear this. In California. And when I grew up here, that was a heavy weight to bear. But coming back as an adult, I realized that all those structures kind of evaporated. In fact, I was probably carrying around that more than this culture was. Um, but, but, I, but I think it's an important thing to realize that there may be vestiges of this, but the energy, I mean, not to be flippant, but remember the food and going out here a long time it was terrible all these people here now have created an incredible vibrant city that the world wants to see they used to tie up the swings on the parks on sundays right? yeah, you, so you couldn't go into a park on a sunday and right, swing right yeah right. Steve, back in the day can i just interject a little bit about accent i thought a lot about accents over the course of my life and my career particularly as a writer and I regret the fact that it's probably too late to ever have an Ontarian accent. <laughs> because we were so linguistically conservative and preservative. We were, we were the vestiges of the empire and we were hanging on and we were deliberately flattening everything out and staying under the radar in contrast to Newfoundlanders and people from other parts. Now we're simply too, we're too exploding with diversity and different voices and to ever have one. But I, I wouldn't have minded being identifiable by my accent when I was younger. <laughs> but there was nothing. People would say, are you from Minnesota? Are you from yeah, you're Winnipeg? Right. Are you from Buffalo? Are you from Cleveland? Are you? They, no idea. Not quite. Well, in the same way, you did a piece uh, actually in The Guardian on this that I just read uh, the other day. Fairly recently about post-nationalism. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, if, yeah. if Canada is a post-national state, are we a post-provincial state in the same way? Yes. Yes. We are, we are evolving out of any, any notions of, of monoculture. We are evolving into the multi. It's, it's inevitable. It's not without its bumps. We can talk about Peel right now yeah, and the okay. challenges around the schooling there. Mm-hmm. But it is happening, and for a moment, to sound you know, softer than I am, am, it's quite beautiful. It's quite lovely. I couldn't be happier as a 56-year-old Ontarian to be alive and well and participating in this blooming of our culture and our society. 
Let me quote somebody who, alas, is not alive and well. This is Christopher Hitchens, who said of Toronto or Ontario, as a somewhat blander version of North America, a United States with a welfare regime and a more polite street etiquette, and the additionally reassuring visage of Queen Elizabeth on the currency. <laughs> How does that work for you? I do, I do <laughs> like to see her every once in a while. I'm one of the few French Canadian monarchists I know uh, because I know that she protects our democracy because of the political system that we borrowed from uh, what we French Canadians call the conqueror. But we have a real soft spot for that conqueror because I really like the country that we've built together and, uh, and its openness. And I love the diversity in Canada. It's extremely important to me. Something about her face makes me think of that diversity for some reason because of the width and breadth of the British Empire, so I'm not down on the family compact and I'm not down on, hmm. on uh, the British heritage in Canada or, or in Ontario, which was invented in 1791 to accommodate United Empire loyalists. So we've been hmm. waving flags here for a long time. It's funny that we don't anymore. Well, you are all for, uh, I mean, brand ambassadors, if you like, in a certain kind of a way. And, okay, let's, let's hit this with you first, Gail. Put your marketing hat on. You know, Ontario, is it... Everybody's looking for that sort of catchy phrase or that slogan or that, that certain something that says to the world, here's what we are. You know, Canada's kind of cool right now. What's Ontario? Do we have that kind of outward brand of the world? Well, I think that we've talked about it. It's, it's our diversity. It's our fluid identity. It's our really devotion to Canada. Um, you know, Ontario would make a perfectly fine country all on its own. This is something we have to think about. You're a separatist? Uh, I might be on certain days. Yeah, I think Ontario is what is, Ontario is uh, bigger uh, than uh, than Austria, for example. Most mm. European countries are smaller than we are. They're definitely less diverse. We have a diverse economy, but that's not the route Ontario has ever taken. Ontario has always said we are stronger together, and I think that that's um, you know that finding that brand uh, I think would be good. Brands are great because they simplify complexity, and uh, Ontario is nothing if not complex. And so I think it would be good if we did a, had a brand and a new flag. I think these are tools we need. I, I was always um, of the impression that while Canada could be a kind of a cool name to have your brand associated with, that Ontario always screamed, boring. Is that true, Charles? Uh, I don't think we should brand Ontario. I think we're just fine the way we are. Mm -hmm. I think... Uh, uh, we should keep as uh, the profile we have because, again, from traveling a lot, from talking to a lot, but for running a national organization, it's, it's come clear to me that other parts of the country, this, this is a nuanced and complex conversation. So I, I think we are what we are. We, we contain whatever percentage of the population and the economy. And I, as I said earlier, I, I hold very dear the project we are embarked upon as a society. Mm. But no, we don't need to brand Ontario. We're we all do. right. Well, I'm going to try this again. Do, my hunch is when you travel, you don't tell people you're from Ontario. You say you're from Toronto I, first. I do. You say you're from Canada second. Correct. You never say you're from Ontario. I don't think most of them know where Ontario is, yeah, quite frankly. That's right. they don't. Uh, but I, I think that this, this, the problem is, is that with Peel and with these other regions, it's not just, even the GTHA doesn't really talk about the experience that most of us uh, enjoy. So there's, uh, while I agree there's not a lot of kind of practical benefit to branding Ontario, it seems like just saying we're from Toronto doesn't really explain the whole thing. Ontario but, too big to brand? Too complex and too rich maybe. I mean, mm. if I'm gonna talk about my uh, Brampton, uh, you know, distant relatives and things like that, I mean, they, that Indo-Ontarian presence is really strong. Uh, and stronger than it is in the core of the city. Um, and yet you wouldn't really say you knew Toronto if you didn't uh, connect with these, uh, these outer boroughs or outer cities. So, uh, so th it's almost like Toronto is too small to contain the whole thing, but certainly smaller than Canada. So uh, that's where Ontario maybe lies in between the two spaces. You want to get on Charlie's bad side and try to brand the province? Unfortunately, I can't because I agree with Charlie. I think that I'm superstitious about this thing, and I think if we started to brand Ontario and, and, and were shrill about it, that it would be a sign of decline. Uh, I think it would mean that we, we're afraid that we've lost something, and therefore we need to make an effort to regain it, and that's really not the case. So I think branding Ontario is not where I would want to spend a lot of my money.
Gail? I, th I think that the, the issue, though, is when, when you travel and people say, well, um, okay, where are you from? And I, I agree, it's hard to explain Ontario. Nobody mm. really knows what Ontario is. And it's a disadvantage from an economic point of view, from a touristic point of view, is that people don't have a concept. So why are we afraid to brand uh, Ontario, but we don't think it's a bad thing that California has a strong brand? I mean, we are mm. to... Or New we York. Are to, or New York, exactly. So I think that, that that's maybe a little bit of a colonial cringe and that we, uh, I think most branding uh, companies maybe couldn't do the job, but, uh, <laughs> but that it's a task, um, I think it's an interesting one. And I think it'd be good for kids. I think it'd be good in schools. I think it, it's a way of taking complexity and putting our arms around it. That's uh, what a brand is. I mean, Charlie, obviously the, pro the province of Ontario, Ontario Inc., if you like, has an interest in branding the province as a place where people from outside yeah. the province should want to come and spend lots of tourism dollars. Or to invest. Or to invest. Right. But the question is whether that's a fruitless enterprise. I would argue, rather than yeah. it being a colonial cringe, that it's, we're actually talking here as, as classic Ontarians. We're strategizing how to fit in, how to lead and fit in at the same time mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. Canada. And we're strategizing in a way that's quite nuanced and complex. And that's, that's very... Ontarian actually is very Canadian as well. So I don't, I, I think it's, it is it, important, of course, for the Ontario brand to prosper. I get, frankly, Steve, it never crossed my mind that it might not. I know we experienced that brief moment of being a have not, but I found that. That, that was a big experience. That was kind of funny yeah. more than real, it felt like to yes. me. <laughs> We're not have not. And, 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 and I guess I, I, I'm, I'm operating on the assumption that we don't need to get sell TV ads saying come to Ontario. We don't need to do that. I don't, I don't feel like it wouldn't we work do. anyway, would it? This I can't say. Hmm. I don't have expertise there. And what would you show in such a large <laughs> geographic area too? I mean, I think it's a kind of myth that California and New York have uh, these state brands because Northern and Southern New York, Northern and Southern California, very different things. Uh, and so I think that, you know, it, again, kind of saying that having a fixed identity may, may be a plus for us, may be a plus to not have that. You know, the other provinces that you showed that had strong provincial uh, identity, those things are slightly stereotypical in what we might think of as what those identities are. We have a richness and fluidity in identity that to brand it would be to fix it, and that would be detrimental to us. So it, California may want to plug the fact that they're the Golden State, but we don't need to do that. I don't think so, because it's, what are we talking about? We're talking about sun and fruit and very kind of ridic <laughs> you know, ridiculously reductive things. We're talking about very complex, changing, forward-looking utopian leaning culture. You know, I, I always think it's funny when we celebrate things that, it, that are 10 years, uh, that we've done 10 years ago, like gay rights, marriage, and American people are, are thrilled here. We're, we should accept our forward lookingness more, I think, and, 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 and uh, realize that they're usually following us. You know, we're leading, we just need to accept that. We also have to accept the fact that all discussions come to an end, and this one just did. Oh, no, we have to but I want to thank again. you for great Ontarians, and if I may say great Canadians as well, for coming on to TVO tonight and sharing your views on this. Thanks so much, everybody. Thank you. Help TVO create a better world through the power of learning. Visit TVO.org and make a tax-deductible donation today.